Hello everyone. How are you doing today? Hope you're having a good day. Uh, well, we are uh, going back to the YouVersion uh, Bible study, the Max Licato, uh, Unshakable Hope, building our lives in the promises of God. Something that we all all the need to do uh, to build our lives in the promises of God. God is so good and so uh, so rich, so uh, desiring to bless us that we should build our lives on his promises. There are so many promises in his word that we can hold on to, that we can trust, that we can rely on uh, whatever we're doing and whatever we're facing. Uh, and, and, and that should cause us to have an unshakable hope, a, a hope in him that, uh, you know, hope for the future, hope for everything. I, our hope is built on on him, on who he is and, and what he has done for us. Well, we're going to dig back into this study again. It's Max Licato on the uh, YouVersion Bible app or, or just Bible.com. Uh, you can go online to find that and, and so many other good Bible studies on there that you can find uh, to help you uh, each and every day as you seek to live for the Lord, seek to build your faith, grow in God's grace. Uh, well, today is uh, uh, the, the it's titled "Joy is Coming Soon." Uh, isn't that a wonderful promise that, that joy is coming soon? That our our hope, if if we're going through a tough time right now, and and so many are, that we have a hope, we have a hope of a future. That that joy is is coming soon. Uh, well, Lucado begins, self-help manuals might get you through a bad mood or a tough patch, <laughs> but what about an abusive childhood or a debilitating accident or years of chronic pain or public ridicule? Uh, or you can add your own uh, little uh, uh, struggle in there if you want. Uh, does God have a word for the dark nights of the soul? Cato says he does. The promise begins with this phrase, weeping may last through the night. Of course, you knew that much. <laughs> weeping is uh, something we find ourselves doing sometimes when, when things are tough, when things are dark. Uh, this is dark night, nights of the soul, when we're struggling in, in whatever way it might be, that weeping lasts through the night. But you need to also know this. Joy comes with the morning. Psalm 30, verse 5 is where that comes from, that promise that uh, we can build our life on that promise. The NIV says it this way, For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. That's an incredible promise that, that eventually, while bad things happen, this world is falling apart, this world's breaking down, but... But eventually, joy will come with the morning. We can rely on that promise, build our lives on that promise. Lucato says, do you ever wonder if a morning will bring this night to an end? <laughs> will, will that morning ever come? Mary Magdalene certainly did. She had, she had been consumed with troubles, but then Jesus stepped into her world and restored life to her, uh, restored life, to her life. Wherever Jesus went, Mary Magdalene followed. She heard him teach. She saw him perform miracles. Uh, she helped pay expenses. She was always near Christ. Uh, once she came to Christ, once he saved her, her life was completely different. But then Lakeda moves ahead to, to uh, the night when Jesus had died. And he says, do you ever wonder if a morning uh, will bring the night to the end? Uh, on that Friday, Mary watched Jesus die. On Saturday, she observed a sad Sabbath. Jesus was dead. When Sunday came, she went to the tomb to finish the work she had begun on Friday. She knew uh, nothing of the empty tomb. She came with no other motive than to wash the remaining clots of blood from his beard and say goodbye. It was a dark mor morning. It was a morning of, of tears, right? A hopelessness. There was no hope. Uh, it, it was only the darkness of, of Jesus' death. Lucadia says, but when she arrived at the tomb, she saw that the stone had been taken away. That's John 20, verse 1. Assuming grave robbers had taken the body, she hurried to find Peter and John. They took a look and hurried to tell the others. But Mary, it says, this is verse 11, but Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. In other words, I mean, it was Lucadia said, could her world get any darker or more hopeless? Uh, it was truly a dark night. I mean, what all of the hope was gone. Uh, talk about an unshakable hope. It was anything but hope. 
uh, and in some sense it probably seemed like an unshakable sadness, an unshakable struggle. Lucado says, it was then that two angels met her, but Mary mistook them for men. It was still dark outside and even darker in the tomb, uh, no doubt darker in her soul. Her eyes were tear-filled. She had no reason to think angels would be in the tomb, but in the midst of Mary's darkest moment, the sun came out, S-O-N, <laughs> like that. Jesus showed up. She didn't recognize her Lord, so Jesus called her by name. Maybe it was the, the way he, he said it, the inflection, the tone, the Galilean accent. Maybe it was the memory associated with it. The, the moment she first heard someone say her name, unladen with perversion or an agenda. Uh, she was remembering back to when he had first called her Mary. <laughs> her world went from dead, uh, from a dead Jesus to a living one. Weeping may last through the night, but joy, joy comes in the morning. Uh, what an awesome thing that is, that moment when everything changes. Uh, in our lives. It's what happened for Mary. It's what happens for us when we come to Jesus, when we trust him. Uh, when we're building our life on that, un that unshakable hope, on the promise of God, that joy will come in the morning. Uh, Lucado says, I wish I could paint this scene. The white-robed Messiah, the joy-filled Mary, her hands extended to him, his eyes upon her, the reflection of the sunrise and the tears of Mary, and a broad smile on the face of Jesus. Joy comes because Jesus comes. And if you don't recognize his face, he will call your name. Your name is not buried in some heavenly file. God needs no name tag to jog his memory about you. He has said, see, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Isaiah 49, 16. Do you believe that? Let me just ask you that. Just in your heart, search your heart. Do you believe that God knows you and loves you? That his presence brings brings joy uh, to a dark night, um, that his, he really does have your name engraved on the palms of his hands. Uh, he said, that's something we need to know deep down. I mean, if we're going to build an unshakable hope, uh, this will do it more than, more than anything. We can build our lives on this promise of God that, that well, there may be some crying, more be, maybe some weeping at night, but, but joy comes in the morning. Uh, you are everything to God, Lu Lucado says. You, you mean everything to him. You, he loves you. Jesus came and he died. He went through all that he did on the cross, all the suffering uh, for you because he loves you. And he has your name written on his, the palm of his hands. That's a beautiful picture, a beautiful sight. Well, we come to, to uh, Lucado's respond section of, of this uh, devotional. It says, what does Mary Magdalene's story mean what does Mary Magdalene's story tell you about Jesus' interest in the needs of individual people? I mean, he cares about individuals. He cares about you. And that's the second part of this question that Locato asks. He says, what individual attention has Jesus shown you? Think about in your life, where is Jesus showing up? Uh, just when you needed him, maybe. Uh, you know, where is he showing up in your life, in your heart, just when you needed him? I, I can guarantee you he has. Maybe you didn't recognize it as that. Uh, but you need to think it through and, and sort of analyze in your own heart, where has Jesus shown up in your life? What individual attention has he shown to you? The second one is, he says, how does this promise affect your outlook on your current situation? Whatever you're going through right now, does this promise mean something to you? It should. What are some ways you have clung to Jesus when your life seemed full of despair? When has he done that? When has he been faithful in the past? When that will help you know how he'll be, be faithful in the present or in the future as you look forward to, to what might happen in your life and what struggles might be there. Uh, you may have some weeping for the night, but joy comes in the morning. And the third question Lucado has here, how has God used others to meet your needs? Uh, how has God brought other people into your life to help you to meet a need that you that you have? Uh, and then he asked the question, who can you reach out to today for prayer? And I, I think there's two sides, two ways of looking at that. If you need prayer, is there someone you can call? Someone that uh, that needs you, uh, that, that would pray for you. But on the other hand, who can you pray for? Who can you, who do you know that's struggling and, and just needs some words of encouragement? And, and you could you could do that for them even right now. Just pick up the phone and call them, text them, email them, whatever. Uh, who can you uh, pray for? 
who can you ask to pray for you? Kind of two sides to that question. Well, let's uh, let's pray as we wrap up today. Lord, we we thank you for this this wonderful promise that while we may be weeping for the moment, uh, we can know that joy comes in the morning. Joy comes with your presence. Joy came uh, to Mary Magdalene as as she was outside the tomb and and weeping in, in the darkest moment of her life. And, and you came and you visited her and brought such joy to her. Just the sound of your voice meant everything to her. And Lord, you, you, you speak to us in our moments of, of struggle as well, in our dark night moments. Uh, joy comes in the morning. We thank you for this awesome truth. And Lord, there's so much darkness in our world today, and it can be overwhelming, even as we watch the news and read about uh, various issues with, with COVID-19 and uh, as we, we read about uh, some of the, the racial unrest, Lord, we just pray you, you'll bring healing in every area where it's needed. And all those that are struggling, all those that are uh, uh, you know, hurting, all those that are in need of a physical touch from you, Lord, we just pray that you would you would uh, bring healing, Lord. That's, that's our greatest request. That's the thing that uh, is needed so much, Lord. Uh, just just be with each one, each person, each, each leader as they make decisions, Lord. We just pray that you would bring guidance, that you would encourage hearts, that you would be present. Because in you, in your presence, is, is joy. Thank you, Lord. We, we just uh, give it all to you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for watching today, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Uh, you have a great day and we'll, uh, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.